Hi everyone, I'm here to talk about a movie I've just seen. It's the first of 14 in the Sherlock Holmes series that was done with Basil Rathbone. To me, Rathbone being the best of the Sherlock Holmes actors I've seen so far. Born to play the role, the best of them all. The first one, The Hound of the Baskervilles, which is the famous story, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and his character. Everybody knows or has heard of The Hound of the Baskervilles. There's been other versions of this, one of them by Hammer Films. And uh, this one was done by 20th Century Fox, as was the second one in the series called The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. That was also done by Fox. After that, the remaining 12 would be done by Universal Pictures. And uh, the first two features take place in the 1800s. They're more vintage and appropriately set in time. Later on, for the 1940s, they started set, setting the Holmes films uh, during the war years, uh, World War II, more contemporary for the time. But anyway, let's stick to talking about this one. A lot of people feel this is the best, or at least one of the very best, of the Rathbone Holmes films. The first thing to say about it is, and I know no actor likes to be typecast, and I think uh, no exception was Rathbone. He, he, after a while, he came to resent this. I think that at first he really wanted to play Holmes. I think he really could uh, could get the feeling of wanting to be that character in a way when he was younger. And I think after a while, when he became known for this almost exclusively, I don't think he was too pleased. But he really fits the role, man. When you watch this movie right away, Rathbone was born to play the part. He looks the part. He's got the perfect look. You know, classic chiseled features with the nose and everything and the pipe, uh, the cap. I mean, he is absolutely perfectly in mold for the character. And he just slips right in. He's comfortable as if he's been doing it all his life. I love the way Sherlock Holmes here is so well calculated. He's got a sense of humor. Um, he is like a, a, a thinking machine, you know. And uh, he knows all the answers. Really, really admirable. Somebody you really want to be. Okay, well, also you have in here his partner, uh, played by, of course, Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson. Now, people who've seen these movies know that he wasn't really written the way it, he's uh, interpreted here. Uh, they had to do something a little different with him uh, for the movie, so they made him kind of a bumbling fool, kind of like the sidekick and stooge next to Holmes. I think it works wonderfully in the films. So I'm okay with it. And I've seen all the Sherlock Holmes films, but not in many, 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 many years. All right, this is the DVD released by MPI. MPI would go on to release the second movie individually, too, that I talked about. And then they would go do uh, sets of several films. I think it was three sets in all. It was kind of a, a big, clumpy collection that I have on DVD. And I'm still trying to decide whether or not I should get the Blu-rays to these. Anybody out there who is familiar with the Blu-ray set that has the Blu-rays, please fill me in. Let me know if it's worth the upgrade. Uh, I'm really thinking of stopping right here before I go on with the rest of the series. And for the rest of them, wait until I order a Blu-ray set. So I want to know if there's that much improvement. But I'm um, getting farther and farther away from the actual movie here. First of all, um, let's talk about the general plot. Um, there's uh, Baskerville Hall, which uh, for years before, there's always been people that uh, are getting killed by the legend of the hound. There's a hound that uh, a mad dog goes around and kills people. And um, this is still going on now as we get to the most updated, uh, I guess you could say, heir to the estate who is this time played by Richard Green as Sir Henry Baskerville. He's the young, the young, young man who's going to be the new one to uh, inherit the estate. And somebody's out to kill him, and it's apparently a, the dog. But, you know, what's involved? And is anybody behind it? You know, and that's up to the Sherlock Holmes to unravel and Dr. Watson. Uh, this is so well directed. Um, let me make sure I've got the director down here. I don't know if I have it handy. I always try to have notes here. Okay, uh, Sydney Landfield. Okay, and uh, some changes were made to the original novel. Of course, this happens a lot when you make movies. It's customary to change some things around. But, um, yeah, so uh, 
Uh, Dr. Mortimer, who's played by the great villain in most movies, Lionel Atwell, uh, is one of the, he could also be conceivably one of the red herrings. There's always red herrings in here. He's in the Universal Horror Movies, Lionel Atwell. He's Dr. James Mortimer, and he's the one that comes to Holmes to ask for help because he wants to take care and watch uh, Sir Henry, the young man, and make sure that he is going uh, not to be harmed because he feels he's next in line for the danger. And the cast is so good here. In addition to, of course, Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the two main roles. And, and as I mentioned, already getting this, it's always a treat to see Lionel Atwill. But you have John Carradine here as a butler. You have also, uh, let's see, E.E. Uh, e. Clive as a small role as a cabbie. The reason I mention these people is because a lot of people know these people if you grew up like me with the Universal Monster movies. Like also, like you have Mary Gordon, who would be the recurring character of dear old Mrs. Hudson. There, there's really a good a good uh, cast here. And Richard Green, as we said, you know, stars, stars gets top billing as Sir Henry, the, the new heir to the estate on the Moors. The setting of the Moors, uh, you know, cloudy creepy atmosphere shadowy foggy really well staged um yeah i i can't really say enough about this it's interesting throughout uh, it's fairly easy to follow sometimes these some of these movies i find hard to follow and keep up with not just the holmes films but a lot of times uh detective films in general charlie chan films uh even see even the james bond films some of them you really got to focus and focus uh, but this is pretty light and easy. And again, the, the treat is just watching together, Nigel Bruce and especially Basil Rathbone, together as as as, as partners. And um, it's a complete delight watching you know, Basil do his stuff. Um, I'm so looking forward to seeing the rest of these again with a fresh mind because it's been at least, I don't know, 20 years since I've seen these. Somewhere around there. 20 years, give or take. 17 years, you know, and I really am thinking about getting the Blu-ray set. So I thank you all. I recommend this on a scale of four stars. Oh, it's tough with this one because I could go a little higher, but uh, I'll stick with a three stars for this one. Uh, could be could be three and a half on a good day out of four. Really good. Uh, I recommend it for people that like old movies and detective stories, Basil Rathbone, etc. Universal horror films too. You know, has all those trappings of that good good vibe and mood and atmosphere. Thanks everybody for watching.